Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the story of Happy's Humble Burger Farm, with an in-depth look at its world, lore, characters, and of course, the ending explained. This video will guide you through the mysterious story step by step, and try to make sense of the many sinister goings on within. So sit back, relax, grab a Happy Meal, and let's serve up another slice of Horror Games Explained. We open on an unnerving sight indeed. Two scientists working for a company they refer to as Obscura install a mind control chip to the brain of our character, a device capable of fabricating reality. These workers seem disgruntled, and one muses that Obscura plans to eventually install chips in the minds of their own employees. It seems whoever this Obscura company is, they're up to no good, and looking to fabricate the reality of everyone, even their own employees. We don't get long to eavesdrop though, drifting off into a state of sedation and engulfed by darkness. Upon waking up, our protagonist, test subject E42, finds himself in a very ordinary life, living in a cheap apartment in the downtown district of a city called New Elysian. It's E42's first day on his new job as a worker at local fast food establishment Happy's Humble Burger Farm. A rather unfriendly voice contacts him through a communicator playing the role of store manager and giving E42 a guided tour of both the city and his day-to-day -day duties on the job. Hey kid, good news, you're hired. And I'm your boss. The company had this communicator dropped off all Burger Farm employees get one. It allows me to check in on you at any time. From here we partake in a rather monotonous and mundane existence, working a shift at Happy's Humble Burger Farm and then clocking out, only to return home and go to sleep so the process can begin anew the next morning. Within his apartment, the worker discovers a booklet detailing the history behind Happy and the other animatronic mascots. Their origin dates back many decades, but to understand their creation, we must also take into account the world we inhabit. You see, the universe Happy's humble burger farm is set in is not the one we know. There is no Earth, no Saturn or Mars. Instead, the planets have different names and backstories. The Earth equivalent is a planet called Scythe, and there is a detailed explanation of this planet found in the planetarium within the city museum. Check it out. Scythe is our home. As far as the general public are aware, Scythe is the only planet containing life. It was the Paragon's founder, Dr. Zane Grimm, who united the three nations of Sabit, Darius, and Robliad under the world Scythian government. The tribes of the Zakinian Mountains, deep within the oceans of ice, govern themselves. Before the nations of Scythe united to form one singular government, a great war took place on the planet. This brought great hardship and misery to the people of Scythe, and so, in the wake of the conflict, the government encouraged creators to do what they do best, creating entertainment such as cartoons to help raise morale as Scythe rebuilt. One of the most prominent cartoonists was a man named Tex Vanavere, himself a veteran of the Great War. Tex created a cartoon that captivated audiences worldwide and quickly rose to success. This cartoon was titled Farmyard Festivities and featured characters taken from the doodles in Tex's school notebooks called the Barnyard Buds. These consisted of Happy the Cow, Petey the Portly Pig, Charlie the Chicken, and Sammy the Surly Salmon. In addition, there were two cousins known as the Farmer and the Fisherman, who took on antagonist roles, chasing down the barnyard birds in each episode. While Farmyard Festivities was a family-friendly show with wide appeal, things changed when Tex's son Chuck took over the franchise from his father. In the final episode of the original cartoon, Chuck requested that his father have Happy and Co finally caught and butchered by the farmer, a move that shocked audiences. From here, Chuck took things in a more anarchic direction. Twenty years later, he created nightmarish versions of the characters for a new show aimed at an angsty and rebellious teenage audience. 
It was called Happy the Humble Heifer and opened to wide critical reception. Unfortunately, before the first season had ended, a fire broke out in the animation studio and destroyed almost everything, forcing Chuck to make a move back to more family-friendly material in order to recoup his financial loss. From the ashes of the fire rose a selection of video games based upon its barnyard birds. These video games went on to be some of the most profitable ever made, with wide audience appeal. As a result, Chuck Vanover created a show based upon these games called Escape from the Barn. While the animation was light and whimsical, the show was quite dark, and many of its characters died tragic deaths along the way. Chuck continued steering his father's creations in a more adult direction, with the advent of a hyper-violent Moonga comic featuring nightmarish barnyard bud designs. A selection of horror movies themed around this twisted vision was also released. Then, all of a sudden, Chuck vanished, and the franchise was handed over to his twin children. The Vanover twins completely retooled the Barnyard Buds, once again making them family friendly with the creation of hit show Happy's Humble Hijinks. This show taught children important life lessons, morals, and social messages, as well as featuring an uplifting and joyful atmosphere. The show's popularity drew the attention of fast food corporation Happy Hamburger, and soon after a merger occurred, this giving birth to the first ever Barnyard Buds themed restaurant, and the rest, as they say, is history. Life in New Elysian City doesn't feel quite right, the streets of the city give off a weird vibe. Everybody looks the same, and interaction is almost non-existent. The next door neighbour, Toe, is our only friend, yet seems completely zoned out and unable to properly communicate. But by far the most horrifying aspect of this city, and more specifically Happy's humble burger farm, is the plethora of creepy entities which haunt us at every turn. Strange shadow people who blow up in clouds of toxic gas, pixelated humanoids running around on all fours, and ghoulish apparitions who run into the kitchen to shut down the appliances and make our shift even more unbearable. If we screw up too many times on account of these mischievous entities, then we incur the wrath of Happy the Humble Heifer herself. But this isn't some kind of friendly cartoon animatronic, rather a demonic version of Happy who spews up toxic waste contorts her body into hideous shapes, and literally consumes her victims through the hole in her unzipped stomach. Through notes we find during our adventure, we discover that Happy terrorises the staff of this burger joint, dragging them to work if they are late, and attacking anyone who messes up an order. Talk about unfair employment. E42 begins to search for answers, and it isn't long before he finds them. One morning, an explosion at a local construction site allows our hapless hero to gain access to a gated off warehouse, despite his manager advising to the contrary. Whatever that was, I advise going home. Definitely don't investigate, leave it to the pros. The New Elysian Police and Fire Department will take care of it. There's no reason to be wandering towards the sound of chaos. Inside this facility resides a monstrous version of Petey the Pig, as well as some explosive AI bots to boot. E42 must battle this beast while sidestepping these dangerous explosive robots, feeding Petey an overdose of Happy Burgers until the greedy predator quite literally bursts at the seams. For his troubles, E42 unearths a floppy disk featuring the schematics to a device called the Keypad Hacker. Returning home from a stressful day of pig fighting, E42 hears a loud explosion in the bathroom. Upon investigating the commotion, E42 discovers a secret laboratory within his apartment, and inside, a sentient robot head known as Vic. Vic informs us that he was working together with the previous resident of this apartment, test subject E7, but E7 went out some time ago and never returned. Vic also explains how E42 ended up here to begin with, 
This world is an illusion, a virtual simulation created by tech company Obscura, where E42 is now being used as their latest test subject. E7 was a human like you, a friend. He woke me up, now I'm gonna wake you up. All of this is fake, and E7 made recipes to try to break out. Throughout our adventure we discover more and more about the mysterious E7 and his personal journey into the Heart of Darkness after finding a new companion in Vic and attempting to escape the simulation. Here are some choice snippets from his audio logs. I'm E7, the one they used to keep in the Burger Barn simulation. The robot customers have become much more advanced since I left Barn and got thrown into the diner. I managed to capture one of them power it down and remove his head before tossing all his limbs in that spooky parking garage. I've been hacking into the head back in my motel, off shift, and believe it or not, he came to life. This virtual intelligence cybernetic isn't just someone to talk to though. He's gonna be my ticket out of here. We've uh, started to work on these recipes. Keycard hackers, bombs, and the most important of all, the helmet. When the helmet is finished, it'll fry that lousy chip they implanted in my skull. And then I can finally get out of this place once and for all. We actually play as E7 in the original prototype game, Happy's Humble Burger Barn, and get to live through his story. Certain information in the following segment is also pulled from Burger Barn, and this prequel is key to gaining a true understanding of events in full. Most notably the motives behind shady tech corporations Obscura and Paragon. After meeting up with Vic, the talking AI head, E42's investigation into the world around him begins, and with it, some shocking revelations are made. After building the keycode hacker, E42 returns to Happy's restaurant and gains entry to the manager's office. Here he discovers a secret trap door, leading down into a production facility, where it is revealed the people of Elysian City are in fact AI bots. Built on an assembly line by Obscura Biotech, a corporate overlord developing some seriously questionable technology. The more E42 pokes around the town, the more evidence of Obscura and their partner company Paragon he uncovers. Notes written by previous test subjects expose a sinister truth. Paragon is a genetic technology company that has conducted vast research into the human mind and how to condition it into following certain rules while under a state of advanced drug-induced hypnosis. This corporation was headed up by founder Dr. Zane Grimm, a man who began his crusade into mind control with relatively good intentions. After the Scythe War, Dr. Grimm searched for a way to prevent further conflicts and violence from erupting. His theory was that if a person was removed from their violent thoughts, then no violence would occur. So Grimm began working on a human experiment titled the Cheese Maze Initiative. To put it simply, this initiative was designed to influence a person's mind with audio and visual cues. So for example, when a certain piece of music or TV show is played that a test subject has been conditioned to respond to, then they would fall into a state of hypnosis and become compliant to their handler. As Dr. Grimm put it himself, it was a way of herding the sheep. Grimm created many different types of simulation, including the Wage Slave, which is the experiment our protagonist E42 finds themselves trapped within. It is described as follows. Location, Happy's Humble Burger Barn. Premise, low wage fast food worker, living paycheck to paycheck. Methods, audio and visual brain entertainment, trauma based climax, light drugging. Enter Obscura Biotech, another big corporation who also wished to gain control over humanity in the wake of the war. Obscura was not only known for their advanced tech research, but also for their vast media reach through various broadcast services such as TV programming and radio. While exploring the local radio station, E42 discovers audio logs left behind by DJ Maverick Cooper. Cooper signed up for the Lucidus Initiative, the evolution of the Cheese Maze Initiative born from the partnership between Paragon and Obscura Biotech. 
In return, he was promised all access interviews. The interviews conducted by Maverick Cooper with high-ranking members of Obscura reveal the company's diabolical master plan. Seems Obscura's slogan is pretty accurate. In what ways does your programming go about this reality fabrication? Essentially, one of our primary goals is social control. Ideally, our programs will contextualize history. Imagine for one second how smart everyone would be if there was only one truth. We've also used this to fortify elections, to normalize behavior, to shift cultural norms. We want to control every aspect of reality because we know we can make it better. But despite being given all access, Maverick had, in return, forfeit his human rights to Obscura, slowly forgetting who he was while trapped inside the simulation and forced to broadcast mind-controlling audio to the masses. I hereby forgo my human rights to Obscura Biotech for the period of one year. Obscura aren't all that bad, you know? Sure, they may have extended my contract numerous times, keeping me here for what has to be several years at this point. But at least they've been lining up great interviews for me at New Elysian Talk Radio. Maverick, uh, Camp Cooper signing, signing out. Since joining forces with Obscura and other prominent members of the Synthian government under the Lucidus Initiative, Dr. Grimm's plans changed. The goal was no longer just about finding a way to stop violence, but finding a way to control all of humankind, to manipulate the masses via Dr. Grimm's research with the help of Obscura's technology and hold influence over everything. To keep out of the public eye and conduct their mind control experiments in peace, Obscura and Paragon set up their base of operations on a volcanic island known as Durijango. Here they used the volcano itself as a natural power source and built their labs and simulation centers around its base. They built a vacation resort called King's Comfort to draw people in from the mainland, offering a luxury holiday in return for their cooperation. Little did residents of this resort realize they would end up as mindless drones. This, however, did lead to some bad press, as reports of missing guests branded the island resort as cursed. This bad press led to investigations from outside sources. One such investigator was Dr. Rochelle Luna, who, after spending time within the simulation, concluded that using trauma-based triggers on test subjects was inhumane and unethical. The results are troubling, to say the least. The same trauma is present in test subjects across every simulation. We aren't producing subservient workers, we're replicating trauma. Upon extraction, I must demand Zane reconsider his Lucidus initiative. It must be shut down immediately and permanently. Grimm is a good man, but I fear he's been staring into the darkness for far too long and losing sight of why we all started this. In fact, we see evidence of the long-term psychological damage these test subjects endured when examining our neighbor and co-worker Toe. This once normal man spent years in the simulation, subjected to extreme trauma for far too long, his brain eventually turning to mush. My name is Theodore Oliver Emerson, but my family calls me Theo, and my friends, they all call me Toe. I've been stuck here in New Elysian City. It's like this fake town. I don't know how to get out. If you're hearing this, you gotta help me. I think there's others too, and you gotta hurry. They're doing something to our brains. I'm losing my memories. He became obsessed with his audio and visual cues for Barnyard Buds and their associated media. Obscura had been using shows like Escape from the Barn and Happy Tumble Hijinks to spread subliminal mind control messages to their viewers. Many of the scientists working alongside Dr. Grimm felt uncomfortable after witnessing how far he began taking these experiments in the wake of his partnership with Obscura Biotech. Eventually, this led to one scientist rebelling and blowing the whistle on both of these companies. I've shipped this video and massive data packages to every media outlet I could find. From the Sabbath Broadcasting Company to Maverick Cooper. And I will expose the vile underbelly of Paragon. Dr. Grimm was once a good man, but he has lost his mind.
Earlier we spoke briefly about the monstrous versions of both Happy and Petey, but how did these monstrosities come to be, not to mention the other creepy entities we encounter? Well, it all started with a conflict on the island of Jori Jongo, between the native tribes and the Paragon Corporation. These tribes pushed back against Paragon after the company began dumping toxic waste into their fishing waters. Another tribe rebelled, accusing Paragon of illegally using the sacred seeds they had farmed for centuries. It is likely these sacred seeds were used to concoct the hallucinogenics used to drug test subjects. In order to silence the tribes and hide this unethical work from the onslaught of media brought about by the whistleblower's actions, Paragon took a rather drastic and heavy-handed approach. Under orders from CEO Dr. Zane Grimm himself, a nuclear bomb was dropped on the side of the island these native tribes inhabited, wiping them from the face of the planet. But from this explosion came a new form of terror. Organisms living deep within the core of Scythe were awakened and struck back at Paragon and Obscura with a vengeful wrath. The first encounter with Acid Joy happened shortly after the nuclear strike under Ajonga. For months beforehand, there were rumours. People said they heard noises from the dark and the staff would go missing. They didn't emerge from the shadows into the bombing. Something primordial from the deep within the core of the Scythe was not loose when we started our sick experiments here. These organisms managed to attach themselves to various animatronic mascots around the Paragon facility. However, the organisms didn't choose to inhabit the friendly cartoon-like mascots, but rather the creepier versions Chuck Vanavere had created during his era running the Barnyard Buds franchise. They took on these more nightmarish forms knowing they would better strike fear into their prey. These organisms labelled as assets by Paragon were highly intelligent and knew how to best exploit the weaknesses of their prey. Asset Joy was the most powerful and the only organism the scientists were unable to successfully contain. She attached herself to Happy the Humble Heifer and began to terrorise the facility, its staff and test subjects in equal measure. Angered by the explosion on their island, these assets harnessed the various Barnyard Bird mascots and began to eradicate all human life. These organisms, or assets, also attached to the AI units and human test subjects, giving birth to the many weird apparitions we see stalking the streets. Despite this, and much to the dismay of obscure researchers, Dr. Grimm marvelled at the discovery of these assets and put in place plans to contain and study them. Well, for some reason, Grimm thinks we need to keep these things alive? To study them? The death count spiralled out of control as these experiments went on. Eventually it became apparent the assets could no longer be contained and in one final bid to keep them away from the rest of the world, Dr. Grimm sealed off the lower levels of the facility with a bomb to keep the press out and these things in. But the blast only made them angrier still. As E-42 journeys through the abandoned lower levels of the facility, he comes face to face with each of these assets. Eventually, after braving these terrors, E-42 locates schematics for a device Vic refers to as the Zappy Helmet. This device allows for the user to remove the inhibitor chip installed in their brain and, by doing so, restores their old memories and allows them to think freely once more. So, disk drive in hand, E-42 collects up the required parts to build said helmet and embarks on one final mission to escape the simulation. With the helmet now constructed, E-42 places it over his head and travels back five years earlier to his last real memory. Here, he remembers the day he was captured, but more importantly, who he really is. A journalist named Ryder, who arrived on the island after receiving evidence from the aforementioned whistleblower. He had come to the resort on Durijango to expose the nefarious schemes of both Paragon and Obscura Biotech. Unfortunately, he also witnessed the nuclear bomb dropped on the island to cover up these dark truths, and during the evacuation was captured by Paragon security and taken straight to surgery where he was fitted with a chip and integrated into the Lucidus simulation. Thought engineering was a success. Test subjects' memories have been suppressed and he is assimilating to the fabricated reality. 
He has been assigned test subject designation employee 42, or E42 for short. Remembering this, E42, who we can now refer to as Ryder, makes his way through the ruins of the previous fast food restaurant, Happy's Humble Burger Barn, located beneath the newly rebuilt Burger Farm. E7 guiding him here with secret messages which are now visible thanks to the removal of the inhibitor chip. Unfortunately, Vic will not be joining us for the ride, running out of power and terminating shortly after Ryder returns from his memory hack. Ryder enters the abandoned sewers and discovers he isn't alone, as Happy furiously pursues him at every turn. Upon exiting the sewer system, Ryder discovers yet another past simulation, this one set during the early days of Obscura's research many decades ago. It has the feel of a classic diner from that era, and used far more basic and less lifelike AI units. However, this simulation is unstable, frequently glitching out and eventually revealing the reality that Ryder is exposed to the rising magma of the volcano at the very heart of the island. The entire island is about to blow. Ryder escapes this heated situation and returns to the simulation once more, where he comes face to face with one final asset, this time taking on the form of the farmer. Curiously, when studying the farmer, we realise he may be linked to a local killer known as the Butcher of Northbury Grove. Once again, this character appeared in a previous game by Scythe Development Team, and is also referenced in both Happy's Humble games. In fact, Paragon in particular took great interest in this killer's backstory. Four teenagers fell victim to the Butcher's Blade, and sure enough we see the four cartoon mascots, Happy, Peter, Charlie and Sammy, tied up in this cornfield. Perhaps this is symbolic as representation for the original victims. This theory requires further examination, but it's an interesting note and something that seems to make sense. The Butcher may be another dark entity born from the island, and is now infused with the Farmer animatronic. Ryder manages to escape the farmer and makes a break for the exit hidden behind this telephone box, once again using E7's guidance to do so. After taking this exit, Ryder discovers he has escaped the simulation and is now inside the Obscura Biotech Lab. The staff have been massacred by Happy, and we even witness their final screams through the other side of this door. With no one to stop him, Ryder steps over the blood-stained corpses of his captors and enters the outside world. Finally daylight and away off the island, it seems his ordeal is over and he can finally expose Obscura and Paragon for their misdeeds. As he climbs over the wall and heads off into the jungle, we witness one last horrifying sight. Happy has also managed to escape the facility, and with no security measures left in place, has nothing to prevent her from making contact with the rest of the world. In Dr. Grimm's pursuit to save humanity from themselves, he may have in fact doomed us all. And on that rather downbeat note, we come to the end of this deep dive into the story of Happy's humble burger farm. There was a ton of ground to cover in this video, so I hope you're happy with how I chose to present it. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave me a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.